OK. So I have two presentation. First one is about 5G new radio key capabilities and its use cases. And the second presentation would be around certain more spectrum related aspect, although uh, these aspects have been covered in bit and pieces here and there, but as we are starting uh, session on 5G new radio, I'll just go through these aspects and uh, uh, let us uh, uh, try to understand and then uh, we'll reach to the core part of the 5G new radio. So before I start, I just want to uh, uh, tell you different uh, figures of 5G uh, which are being published and some forecast. The first thing is uh, this particular slide is taken from a report by Qualcomm in the month of March. So uh, as per this report, if you see. So 205 plus operators. 205 plus operators have actually launched 5G some somewhere uh, uh, in the world, right? So this one. And there are 280 plus operators who are actually in investing into 5G. That means they are trying to roll it out. These are additional numbers. The third important figure is that about 75 crore, that is 750 million smartphones are expected to be shipped in this particular year, 2022. That means in the current year, there will be around 75 crore 5G smartphone being supplied across the globe. And the next figure is very, very important. The 5G connection will reach 1 billion mark in 2023. If you compare with 4G, how much time it took to reach 1 billion? So we are reaching two years faster than 4G. So that clearly means that adoption of 5G, rate of adoption of 5G is much faster than 4G. The next figure is about total number of 5G smartphone which will be set during 2020 to 2025, six years every year. And there are more than 1275 types of different design of phone, dongles and other 5G devices. Which are either developed, launched or under development. So this clearly shows that there is a fast. Accelerated rate of 5G deployment and adoption globally. So with this figure, let us start our uh, presentation. So. Uh, before I talk about different capability, let me tell you that how requirement or vision of a particular mobile technology is evolved. So ITU plays a very, very critical role, particularly the radio communication sector of ITU. ITU R, we call it ITU R, radio communication sector of ITU. They create a vision document for a particular technology. They started from 3G, right? So they came out with the vision for 3G, then 4G, and finally in year 2015, this is the document ITUR M2083, which I have shared with all of you, which gives the vision of IMT 2020. So basically the ITU name for 5G is IMT 2020. So they had given a vision, what should be the framework or overall objective of IMT 2020, right? And that vision came in 2015 itself. So we, we all know that there is a 10 year cycle of any mobile technology to come into the market. So every 10 years we are changing from 1G to 2G, 2G to 3G, 4G to 5G, right? And even 6G will take almost 10 years the way it is uh, uh, going as of now, right? 
so once this vision documents are created itu also create minimum requirement minimum technical requirement for that particular technology that is 5g new radio in our case and this document m2410 just see this was released in november 2017 so this gives the specific technical performance requirement of 5g new radio so my presentation first part of presentations are taken from these two documents so you can read these document if you want to go into detail and i will be just going through uh, the crux of these two documents so these two documents talk about three key usage scenario of 5g which is embb ur llc and mmtc so from here itself i would be requesting that uh, some of you can either in chat box or you can open the mic can you tell me the full form starting from embb sir enhanced mobile enhanced mobile broadband you are right massive machine machine go ahead go ahead go ahead please massive machine uh, telephone communications sir massive Mass machine type communication right, ultra reliable low latency communication very right so you guys are right so enhanced mobile broadband massive machine type communication and ultra reliable low latency communications so these are generic scenarios so any use case would be using some property of embb some property of mmtc and some property of ull llc for example if i talk about a autonomous car self driving car that means latency and reliability is important so the major aspect of ur llc it will be using but your car will also have cameras audio video systems so embb is also important to some extent and your car will also be having lot many sensor installed in different part of your car so mmtc would also important so majorly major requirement is ur llc and sub part from embb and mmtc similarly for any use case th there will be a combination of ur llc embb and mmtc will be talking about so let us talk about now embb enhanced mobile broadband and what are the key capabilities of embb which is required to make it happen right the first parameter which i'll be talking about embb is the peak data rate uh, i think i have moved one slide okay it's coming as a peak spectral efficiency i think i have missed one slide but let me uh, just tell you about the peak data rate so i'll just write here peak data rate so can someone of someone of you guess that what is the vision of itu in related to peak data rate of 5g can someone tell me either in the chat box or you can open your mic so 20 gbps so yes you are right 20 gbps somebody is saying 100 gbps somebody 1 gbps correct answer is 20 gbps and that to in downlink right in uplink what should be the peak data rate what is the vision of itu in respect of peak data rate for uplink so mr siu has answered right himanshu has also answered right it is 10 gbps right 10 gbps and can somebody tell me when i say peak data rate what what does it mean इसका मीनिंग क्या है कोई बता सकता है कि सर जब हम डाउनलोड करेंगे या अपलोड कर रहे हैं तो उस टाइम हाईएस्ट कितना उसका स्पीड मैक्सिमम पॉसिबल है फिजिबल कितना होगा ओके राइट एनी अदर आंसर कोई और इसका आंसर दे रहा है सर सर इट मींस डेडिकेटेड यूजर इज आइदर अपलोडिंग और डाउनलोडिंग द डेटा फ्रॉम दैट पर्टिकुलर लिंक 
Right. Any other more precise answer somebody want to give? और सर विदाउट कैरियर सेग्रीगेशन जो आता है सिंपल एट ए टाइम कितना ले पाएगा मतलब अपलोड हो पाएगा ओके सो इफ यू रीड द डेफिनेशन इन द 2410 डॉक्यूमेंट व्हिच आई हैव शेयर्ड दे से दैट इन एन आइडियल कंडीशन इफ द एंटायर रिसोर्सेस इज एलोकेटेड टू द वन यूजर सिंगल यूजर राइट एंड ऑल द पैरेलल ट्रांसमिशन व्हिच इज पॉसिबल इज आल्सो गिवन टू दैट यूजर इन दैट केस व्हाटएवर peak data rate is able to achieve is called peak data rate you can open the document and read the definition so that that, that is your peak data rate 20 gbps and 10 gbps let me erase this and move forward okay now let us talk about peak spectral efficiency so here also i would be asking that what is peak spectral efficiency or spectral efficiency someone from you should answer that what is when we say spectral efficiency what is meaning of it anyone ha yes sir 30 bps hello no? sir means that frequency spectrum hello the number of bits per second per hertz hello bits, bits per hertz okay good answer anybody else want to add ha huh, sir uh, means that frequency spectrum is um, uh, maximum utilized means uh, no frequency band or channel is uh, wasted um, uh, uh, total frequency band can be maximum uh, utilized that a frequency spectrum sir so basically the definition of peak spectral efficiency is that in 1 hertz of the frequency on hertz how much how much data rate you can achieve right that is bit per second per hertz bit per second per hertz so can you guess what is the spectral efficiency of 5g it is 30 bit per second per hertz in downlink and 15 bit per second per hertz in uplink now i have a question many of you are from dot and bsnl so suppose i have 100 megahertz of spectrum and my theoretical spectral efficiency is 30 bit per second per hertz so how much peak data rate i'll be able to achieve 3000 3000 what what is the unit you are talking 3, about 3000 uh 3000 uh मैक्सिमम डेटा रेट वन ऑपरेटर कैन अचीव थियोरेटिकली इज थ्री जी बी पी एस नाउ इन द लास्ट स्लाइड वी लर्न दैट द फाइव जी विल है peak data rate of 20 gbps so can somebody tell me that to achieve 20 gbps how much spectrum i need to actually allocate to the operator my requirement is 20 gbps and spectral efficiency 30 bit per hertz per second so how much spectrum do i need 20 mega 20 gbps divided by 30 bit per second so how much how much bandwidth i require to achieve this 20 gbps sir 1.5 gbps ye kahan 20 bate 30 kariye ye gbps hai aur ye gbps hai 700 exact bataiye 700 exact answer nahi hai 667 megahertz 6 स्पेक्ट्रम so those from dot and handling policy should understand that we need to allocate a, a big chunk of spectrum 
from different band to our operator so that they can actually deploy real 5G into their network. Let me erase this and proceed further. And if you compare this with 4G, it is three times better, three times better. That means what was the spectral efficiency in 4G LTE? अगर ये three times better है तो कितना होना चाहिए था? Three BPS sir. Ten. 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 Thirty. है ना? Ten. Ten bit per second per hertz. Am I right? So uh, can somebody tell me that today our operators who are offering 4G services, how how much bandwidth do they have? Any are from BSNL? They just tell us that BSNL in some circle have LTE. So how much bandwidth? Uh, I mean, so Ritu is saying 10. Okay, 10 is answer for the real question. My question is that any of the operator, how much bandwidth uh, today they have for 4G? At around 50 megahertz in different bands. Uh, how much? Uh, sir, 50, 50 um, uh, megahertz in different uh, bands. Like okay, let us assume they have 50 megahertz of bandwidth. With 50 megahertz bandwidth and 10 bit per second, how much data rate they will be able to achieve? Theoretically, at least. Just multiply, you will get it. 500, uh, 500 Mbps. 500 Mbps. But practically, they have not deployed entire 50 megahertz because they have 2G, 3G network also. They have deployed around, say, 20 megahertz, right? So with 20 megahertz, how much they will be able to achieve? 200. MBPS, yes. right? Practically, when you do speed test in your mobile, how much uh, do you get? How much maximum you have got till now? Anyone? आप आपको कितना मिलता है speed? मुझे तो 30-40 MBPS मिलता है. आप बताएं. 30 MBPS sir maximum. 30, okay. मुझे 40 तक भी मिला है anyway. So all because those are peak speed and we are talking about uh, we are talking about average speed or user experience speed. I'll talk about that. Now the next parameter is user experience data rate. So let me first explain you what is user experience data rate and then talk about that. So basically if you have your BTS here or the radio here, so it'll be covering certain area. So if you go to edge of your network, your speed decreases. Your speed near the BTS is highest, then it goes decreasing. The definition of user experience data rate is that if you go to the 90% point, that means coverage is thoda kam. So in this 90% point, Whatever speed you are able to achieve is called user experience data rate. So that clearly means the minimum speed which you should expect is the user experience data rate. For 5G, it is, it is 100 Mbps. For 5G, it is 100 Mbps. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, no in uh, chat box. Please write yes, no. Or whatever in chat box. Yeah, okay, thank you. And do you know that this particular rate, user experience data rate, is 10 times higher than LTE? LTE, it is 10 Mbps. User experience data rate, which I explained, is 10 Mbps. That is LTE means 4G. So it is 10 times better than 4G. Now let's go to the next parameter called mobility. So all of us know that uh, even in our country now, the high speed trains uh, are being deployed. 
uh, so that can go up to speed of 400 500 km per hour as of now our lte supports only up to 380 km per hour that means if your speed of your train is more than that your mobile will not work so 5g supports up to 500 km per hour and this was taken care thinking about bullet trains right in our country also it is being rolled out so if, even in a bullet train your mobile will keep working 4g may not work but 5g will work now next this is scenario that is ur llc ultra reliable low latency communication so what are the key performance requirement for ur llc right i think somebody has raised hand you can straight away open mic and ask your question praveen yes sir so my question is that the whatever is the user experience data rate which is been governed by the icu or with the standard in which band is it in the fr1 or is it in fr2 and which technology is it the tdd or is it the fdd your question i could not understand if you can your mic is also i mean your sound is not coming proper can you can you uh, sir, are you getting my are, are you getting are you, to the mic are you getting me now थोड़ा The speed is being so user basically, experience. Basically, basically, this is a vision or requirement given by ITU. So that means in any condition, these are the minimum user experience data rate means on to the edge of a network. This is the minimum data rate I should get. Then only my network would be called as a 5G network or IMT 2020, irrespective of what technology I am using behind, whether FDD, TDD, FR1, FR2. right which kind of modulation so irrespective of that those uh, those requirements are the minimum requirement right okay so let us talk about ur llc now so what are the different key performance requirement of ur llc uh, let us first talk about latency can some of you tell me that uh, what do we mean by latency delay in packets sir time difference okay delay or time taken to reach a packet so basically when i send something to you how much time it takes to reach you right so that is called latency so kind of a end to end latency including starting from a device to base station to the core and finally where it is getting delivered to the next device or to internet service so that is latency but before i talk about this uh do you know what is latency of your eyes when i throw something to you aapka aankh blink karta hai so how much time it takes to blink your eyes right your response time kitna hai 18 in the milliseconds milliseconds 1 milliseconds anybody else want to answer you can also google sir 160 to 180 millisecond 160 to 180 millisecond 1/10 of a second okay so it is between 200 to 300 millisecond so average is 250 millisecond we can say so our latency our eyes latency is uh, between 200 to 300 millisecond and uh, have you checked uh, where you do a speed test on your mobile wahan pe ek aata hai ping time aata hai wahi latency hai aapko kitna aata hai have you seen can somebody just check it and tell me that what is the latency you are getting just in do a speed test quickly and tell me mostly sir it's a 16 to 16 to 20 means 15 to 20 milliseconds we are getting it acha in your case you are getting 15 16 millisecond yes 
Okay, so let me write. So basically, somebody is getting 16 millisecond. Uh, Manoj ji is saying 20 millisecond, and so on. So that is the latency we are actually getting in the network. 5G has envisioned a latency of one millisecond. So uh, seeing this, just tell me. When I did uh, just now a speed test, I got 185 millisecond on Airtel network. So it depends from place to place also. So one millisecond. Now, can you guess that what kind of application we are talking about when we are talking about URLLC? Any real world example can you tell me? Koi <coughs> application bata hai. Real time application. Car, sir. Okay, autonomous car. Any more? Remote surgery, sir. Remote surgery, very right. One is the remote surgery. Other is the autonomous car or self-driving car. So now tell me that as a human eye, I have a latency of 250 millisecond, whereas a machine can have a latency of one millisecond. So when a car is being driven by a human and a car is being driven by a machine, collision, chances of collision is less in whether by, I mean, driven by human or by machine. Less by driven by machine, sir. Yes, all because the latency there is less compared to human eye. Jab tak aap sochenge, tab machine can take vision far. Latency is the not only aspect, there are many other aspects because you have to process the data also before you take the decision. So role of AI ML is also important. Uh, just as a rude example, I told you. Uh, the, yeah, sir, this uh, latency is for the user plane or uh, control plane latency? Very good question. So this latency I'm talking about, if you read the document in the ITU, they are talking about two kind of latency. One is the user plane latency and the second is the control plane latency. So user plane, this one millisecond is an user plane latency and particularly for URLLC okay. applications. If you talk about EMBB, they have talked about four millisecond. Okay. That is okay. given in the document. And for okay, control plane latency, it is 20 millisecond. Since you have asked these questions, I had not put it all because I do not wanted to confuse you. Control plane latency is 20 millisecond. So let me now ask, what is control plane latency? Can somebody tell me? Sir, uh, delay in uh, signaling with uh, signaling information and user plane is delay in the actual voice or actual data we need to transfer. So control plane, I would request someone to read the document which I have shared and answer that. So control plane latency is kind of suppose your mobile is idle. And you want to now use a service or transfer some data. So from that time till you are actually started sending the data. So in between a lot of signaling will happen, a lot of processing will happen. So that time is called control plane latency. It's not only one uh, signaling message which has to happen before I actually start sending the data. So from idle time to active time, whatever time it takes from idle state to active state is called control plane latency. It is only one time. When you start the service, once you have started the service, your user plane latency will be important, not the control plane, right? Is it okay? Yes, no in the chat box, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I think Ramesh has raised the hand. Please go ahead and ask your question. Ramesh BR. Okay, if there's no question, then let me go ahead. Sir, sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. That was by mistake. No problem. Now let us talk about reliability. So there are two kind of reliability. One in terms of 
how much error, whatever data I am sending, there, there may be certain error coming due to the channel or due to the other aspect. And other is the availability of the network itself. So let me ask uh, some of you that in terms of reliability, in terms of bitrate error, if I say that my bitrate error is 10 to the power minus 6. So just translate this into percentage. Reliability percentage, how much it will come? Can somebody calculate and tell me? If I say that bit error rate is 10 to the power minus 6 for your LLC applications, so how many 9 I am talking about? 99.9999 percentage which you 5969 nine, we talk about. So how many 9 I am talking about? Can somebody tell me? So basically when I am saying 10 to the power minus 6, what I am saying that out of 10 lakh or 1 million bits, 1 bit of error can be tolerated. 1 bit of error can be tolerated. So in 1 lakh bit, how many correct bit I am getting? 1 lakh minus 1. So in 100 bit, how much correct bit I am get? I will get. So if you calculate this, you will get the percentage. So Karan Goel has answered rightly in the chat box. That is 99.9999 percent. Six nines. So 5969 bolte hai. So six nines kind of reliability we have in 5G, particularly for UL LLC application. And that is the vision which ITU has given. Actual uh, machines may have some different, but that is the vision which ITU had given. So it has to be very, very reliable, ultra reliable in terms of availability and also in terms of error rate. Okay. And they are talking about mobility interruption at zero millisecond when you move from one base station area to other base station area. We call it G node D. Uh, there has to be no interruption to make before break kind of environment has to be there as we have URLLC kind of applications running onto the network. So here comes your control plan latency you can see here. Okay, now let us move to massive machine type communications MMTC. So can somebody tell me that what should be the key performance parameter for MMTC? So MMTC is nothing but sensors, different kind of IoT sensors which will be installed in every object, machine, even in our household, every fridge, every AC, every bulb will have some kind of sensor connected to 5G network. In agriculture field, you'll have a lot of sensors for soil monitoring, your uh, equipment monitoring, so on. So what kind of performance requirement are we expecting in case of MMTC from 5G? Please guess, write in chat box or open your mic. One is capacity, other is positioning. So Salini has said capacity, Ritu has said positioning. Any more answer? Coverage area, very right. Network energy efficiency. Plug and play type. Very right, Karan. Efficiency of data. Energy efficiency of data. Okay, very nice. Sudhansu Kumar Misra says high connection density. Very nice. Energy. Do not need to charge. Lifetime battery. Efficient. Data Very efficiency. So, yes, yes, you guys have got it. So the first key thing is the connection density. So as per vision, it is 10 lakh devices per square kilometer. In a square kilometer, if there are a lot of sensors installed here and there in object machine, so it will support. 10 lakh devices per square kilometer. Now the second key part is your energy efficiency. 
why energy efficiency is important? Can somebody tell me? Open your mic and speak. That why energy efficiency is a very very important for IoT or MMTC kind of application. So so that so, uh, device uh, sensor do not need to charge for the entire uh, life cycle. Very right. And why that is a requirement? Charging is not available. Yes. These sensors you may be required to install. Suppose you want to monitor uh, disasters, right? Natural disasters. So you have to install these sensors in a very, very remote hilly terrain or remote terrain. So there you will not have any option to charge the power or the battery which your IoT sensor is having. So unless you have a very, very big life, 10 years, 10 years, 15 years kind of a life of your sensor, uh, it is useless. Similarly, a lot of sensors would be there in the warehouses deep inside into, uh, uh, I mean, basement and all. So it is very tough to charge or replace the batteries, right? So our network as well as our devices supporting IoT has to be very, very energy efficient. Otherwise, it will not make the make it happen, right? So basically, what we say it is hundred times more energy efficient compared to four G. Hundred times more energy efficiency in five G compared to four G, and there has been lot of technological changes in the architecture, in the design. Every aspect of design has taken care about energy efficiency. Going forward, when we uh, move into more detail into our subsequent session, one by one that will come and I'll be pointing it out to you that how particular aspect is saving the energy. Ashokji, I would like to add to this part of uh, energy efficiency thing. Yeah, sir, please go as, ahead. Yeah, as you have rightly mentioned that these remote devices like operating through IoT and other means, of course, they need to be charged after a very, very long time, maybe two years, three years. That is one part. But we also understand by uh, in this 5G uh, that the energy, it has to be much more greener. I mean, as compared to the previous regimes of our mobile systems like 4G and 3G and others. And uh, in addition to these last devices, even our e equipment, including the code network and other equipment, they also have to be much more energy efficient because we can't afford to waste uh, more energy now. And uh, the BTSs are so much near. I mean, the density of the different uh, base stations to say, which we can loosely, we can call it. They are so much near that if we don't save on energy, we will not survive actually. So as you said, ki, what is the, why is it most important? I think that part seems to be the most important because we are growing like anything. I mean, it, it is a huge expansion and it has to be backed up by a huge energy saving for our sustenance. So thank you Jha sir for adding uh, this particular aspect. So let us move forward. The connection density and energy efficiency and third important aspect is the coverage which uh, some of you have pointed it out because since it has to be very, very remote area and far away places, so your network coverage has to reach. So that is of course as equal uh, or important as connection density and energy efficiency. So let us just quickly compare the capability of 5G and capability of 4G. This particular spider diagram also I have taken from the vision document which I have shared. I'll just explain you very quickly. Starting from the peak data rate. So inside this light green color which you see where we have written IMT advanced is nothing but your 4G. 4G in terms of ITU is IMT advanced and the dark color is for 5G which is IMT 2020. So the peak data rate for 4G was, was 1 Gbps, for 5G it is 20 Gbps, so 20 times increase. Area traffic capacity that is in a particular square meter how much data can be pumped from 0.1 megabit per second to a 10 megabit per second. 
energy efficiency from 1x to 100x, 100 times better. User experience data rate from 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps. Spectral efficiency from 1x to 3x. Mobility from 350 to 500 km per hour. Latency from 10 millisecond to 1 millisecond. And connection density from 1 lakh to 10 lakh. So just see the increase is 20 times, 100 times, and so on, three times on different parameter, different, right? So that is the comparison with 4G. Now, this diagram is also taken from a vision document, which I'm talking about and have shared. This triangle they are talking about that uh, you have EMVB here on top, you have URLC here, you have MMTC here. So how combination of these three would uh, uh, constitute various type of services, right? For example, if you talk about uh, a 3D video, USD, so EMVB feature will be very, very high. Latency, I mean URLLC and MMTC feature would be less and so on. So it's a smart home, voice services. So on this triangle, you see different services requiring different aspect of the three scenario. Some pictorial uh, use cases soon. For example, EMVB, you may have USD video streaming, virtual reality, AR, VR, stadium like environment, and so on. Uh, so, this you can go through. Uh, your AR, VR kind of applications. MMTC can have applications in smart cities, smart home, agriculture, wearable, fitness. URLLC can be autonomous cars, robotics, aviation, industrial automation. These are just a pictorial kind of representation, self-driving car. The public safety, which is one of the important aspects the government has to take care, or 5G will really come handy because, because of the capability of 5G, your connected sensors can help uh, uh, I mean, reduce loss of life, loss of uh, property 5G drones uh, can actually support emergency situation, remote consulting, V2X and all. These are all aspect of public safety. Similarly for industry 4.0 like digital replica and other aspect will actually uh, come very handy. And then for agriculture, a lot of use cases. In India, I mean, we will have a session on 5G use cases from industry leader, uh, leaders going forward uh, in this course. So I'm not going much into detail. I'm just showing you that for experience, AR, VR, XR, all these are uh, use cases of 5G utilizing the three properties or three usage scenario. So with this, the first part of my session is over. I'll give you five minutes break or maybe let us have five minutes discussion or question answer and then perhaps you can break for five minutes and join again. So any discussion point or question which you may like to uh, or do with me?